Kyrie was in attendance at the LA Sparks game last night, and so this led to uh, to obvious speculation because Kyrie's you know been rumored to be going to the Lakers for uh, the last couple of weeks. Uh, he obviously their Nets are talking about trading him, and, and LA seems to be the uh, most interested team based on everything our very knowledgeable basketball people have told us. So let's bring those knowledgeable basketball people back in to talk about this. Brian Windhorst, what do you make of Kyrie being at the Sparks game? Well, first off, I love the new Zach Lowe conceit of comparing transactions to lunch orders. Yes, and I love it. Everybody and so loves sandwiches, I, if we're going to compare... Yes, well, I mean, I, the Nets would love to get our beautiful charcuterie board and champagne <laughs> for Kyrie Irving, but I think we're headed closer to spam and apple juice, to be honest with you. Um, hey, apple so juice look, is good. The reality... The reality... <laughs> <laughs> the reality is yes. that the market for Kyrie Irving is very narrow. And it's not just narrow. I mean, again, it, when I talk about the market, I'm not talking about the player's talent. This is a question about the market. Kyrie is an extremely talented player. But at $36 million, with one year on his contract, it is hard to find teams <clears throat> that have the construction to offer who are going to accept the risk. And you can spend five minutes or you can spend five hours looking at it, and you're going to come down to one answer. The only team is the Los Angeles Lakers. And all they have to offer, any trade with the Lakers and Nets for Kyrie Irving has got to have Russell Westbrook in it. It just got to. And he makes $11 million more. And at this point, when they both play, <clears throat> he is <clears throat> a downgrade of talent. And that $11 million more for a downgrade in talent means the deal gets more complex, and that's where you run into roadblocks. And so I think this is eventually going to happen, but I think it's going to be a fight along the way. All right. Well, what, what do we make, though, of, I mean, like, is he in L.A. to try and, like, say, hey, look at me, I'm in L.A.? Wouldn't this be great? Is that, you reading it that way? Absolutely. <laughs> Anybody who saw, Dan, Kyrie walk on the floor in Brooklyn in early March and sit courtside when all the rules were starting to change, but he still couldn't play because he hadn't taken the vaccination shot. That was all for attention. He knew that the cameras would be on him. He's walking across the floor, waving at everybody, shaking hands. They showed him on the video board. There, there wasn't much of a response in the moment, <laughs> but that is why this is happening. He wants everybody to see that he's there, see that he's in LA. Is it gonna work? We'll see, but I'm with Brian, Zach. When you think about where Kyrie is eventually going to land, there doesn't feel like there are any other spots right now, and the Nets are just hoping that somebody comes in much later. You mean the there's, there's not a ton of demand for a guy who never plays? I mean, I, I can't believe it. But look, uh, Wendy mentioned the $11 million salary difference between Russ and Kyrie. That makes a huge difference to the Nets if they acquire someone in the Durant deal that's signed and traded to them mm. because then they're subject to a hard cap. It's very complicated. But look, if I'm the Nets... This is no longer about the talent or the fit. It's about you want Kyrie Irving in L.A. because you know you can't win the title as presently constructed. You give me two draft picks, both the ones you can trade, both the ones that are available to trade 2027 and 2029. Otherwise, no deal. I'm just making a deal for the picks. Everything else is just collateral damage. Give me the picks. We're transitioning to our next phrase. I think that's a deal that makes sense for both teams. And, Dan, if you're Brooklyn and you've already lived through last year where you weren't sure if he was going to show up or not and then he couldn't play at home because he didn't take the shot, what do you care if he starts the season playing or not? You say, we will hold this out, we will play it out until we get you, what we want from the Lakers because you don't care if he's really going to be there or not because you know his future is not with you. You don't care. And also, I do think the longer this goes, there are going to be one or two teams around the league who start saying, should, should, we, should we maybe dive in? <laughs> like, it's training camps coming up, we need a point guard. Like, should we maybe take a look at it? That helps the Nets. Yeah. No and, Wendy, what do you think, timing-wise? Is there a chance that Kyrie gets traded before Durant does? Yeah, look, if you don't like your options in the NBA, the best thing you can do is wait. The Nets don't like their options, and so they're going to wait. And I tend to agree with Zach. There probably could be another Kyrie suitor emerges, especially if we get into the season and there's injuries. But you're not going to get past the $36 million. I know that we can construct trades and make it easy, but when you actually have to do it as teams, that $36 million is hard to get to where you don't harm your roster. 
and that is a it's a it's a bar for the Durant trade. It's a bar for the Kyrie trade, and it's a factor for the Nets as they try to assemble a team this year and going forward.